is that the operation of the standing orders or any relevant provision be suspended to allow Deputy Mayor Councillor Frank Wilkie to make a public admission as ordered by the Council of Conduct Tribunal in regard to two findings of misconduct. Can I have a second? No. Thank you, Councillor. Oh, okay. uh, all in favour? Thank you. I would like to make a statement regarding a recent. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll just suspend. Standing, standing orders, orders are suspended. suspended. Yeah. Thank you. Statement regarding a recent decision by the Council of Tribunal. This relates to something that occurred almost four and a half years ago when the Council considered a round of community grant applications in June 2018 as part of its usual community grant application processes. One year later, in July 2019, a complaint was made to the Office of the Independent Assessor that I should have declared a conflict of interest in relation to one of the community organisations seeking a council grant, namely the Prigian Beach Community Association. The PBCA was seeking a grant of $2,000 to create a ring of stones in a public park adjacent to the community kindergarten. As a matter of interest, that grant did not proceed as works had already been scheduled as part of the Rufus Street upgrade and was funded by a federal Building Better Regions Fund grant. Nevertheless, I was at both the Services and Organisation Committee and Council meetings when the Council unanimously approved that conditional community grant as part of the community grants process. I did not declare a con conflict of interest at that time. The complaint finding referenced my deceased father, who had been a past president of the PBCA before his passing in May 2017. As my father had passed away more than 12 months before the matter came before Council, it did not occur to me this could possibly be a conflict of interest. The complaint also stated I had been a general member of the PBCA from 2014 until June 2017. Under the Local Government Act, being a general member of a group does not trigger a conflict of interest. As I had not even been a general member for a year before the matter came before Council, I also thought this would not be a conflict of interest. I also received an electoral donation of $200 from Mr Bar Barry Cottrell as part of the 2016 Council election. Mr Barry Cottrell was PBCA Vice President at the time. That amount was recorded on my Electoral Commission register, but not on my Council register, and is below the current legislative $500 threshold for conflict of interest declarations, but this was a genuine oversight on my part. The complaint cited a long-standing personal association with Mr Cottrell as another issue. I had believed that as my association with Mr Cottrell is principally work-related, which is not a conflict of interest under the Act, that a declaration was not required. For the reasons above and the public nature of the works, I genuinely did not believe that I needed to declare a conflict of interest during the June 2018 Community Grant Round. Nevertheless, after a three and a half year process and consideration of 271 pages of evidence, it was found that I should have declared a perceived conflict of interest at both the Services and Organisation Committee meeting and the ordinary meeting of June 2018. I acknowledge the finding of misconduct for not declaring a perceived conflict of interest and admit that I made a genuine mistake in not making those declarations at the time. I take full responsibility and will learn from my error of judgment. Further, in accordance with the tribunal findings, I undertake to do further training at my own cost in relation to the issues of conflict of interest. I will be seeking a review of this decision by the Queensland Civil Administrative Tribunal and legal advice to provide guidance in future conflict of interest matters especially in regards to how long I must continue to raise a deceased parent as conflict of interest. My pledge to councillors here tonight is that I will continue to discuss potential conflict of interest questions at the time they arise and will not be lodging retrospective complaints against them, as this has been a process I would not wish upon anyone. This is a timely reminder that we do need to get these issues right 100% of the time, which I always endeavour to do. I will learn from this and continue to focus on applying the highest possible standards of good governance for our council. Thank you, Councillor Wilkie. I now move that we resume standing orders. Can I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. Uh, carried. Uh, All in favour? St Stockwell Finzel. Oh, no, sorry. I yeah, moved. Sorry, Councillor moved. Stockwell sorry, seconded. Sorry. All in favour? Unanimous. Back to the ordin ordin order of business. Yes. Mayor? Be um, because okay. that, I move because that Councillor Wilkie received the advice from Councillor. Uh, I received that Council received the advice from Councillor Wilkie, and that the advice received be added to the minutes of the meeting. referred to attachment one. So, so, so good Thank you, Councillor Drisvich. All in favour? Thank you. Back to the ordinary uh, order of business at the ordinary agenda. Item two is minutes. <clears throat> Can I have a mover for the confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary meeting, please? Thank you, Councillor Wilkie. Seconded by Councillor Wegner. All in favour? Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. 
There are no mayoral minutes. Does anyone have any petitions? No petitions. There are no notified motions, no presentations, no deputations. We're now up to item eight on page four of the agenda, which is the consideration of committee reports. First, we have the audit and compliance committee recommendations from the meeting held on the 21st of October. These are on page four of the agenda. Queensland Audit Office Report 2021-22 Annual Financial Statements. Internal Audit Report Development Assessment and Approval Processes. Noosa Shire Council Annual Report 2021-2022. Can I have a mover? Councillor, thank you. We can have second it's uh, Councillor Finzel. All in favour? Carried unanimously. Madam, Madam Mayor, we, we can't hear um, Councillor Lawrenceton's oh, vote. Oh, Councillor Lawrenceton. In favour? In favour, thank you. Thank you. The Planning and Environment Community recommendations are next. These start on page five of the agenda. Item one was referred to the General Committee. Item two, MCU 2022-0148, application for material change of use for food and drink outlet, outdoor dining at 2 Memorial Avenue, Pomona. Item three, MCU 2022-0115, application for material change of use for a bar at 1-3-9 Rennie Street, Nooseville. Planning applications decided by Delegated Authority Report, September 2022. I, Councillor Stewart, inform the meeting that I have declarable conflict of interest in this matter in relation to the application CBD Settlers Cove PTY LTD, which is item 34 of this report. Mr Shannon Gillard, who is related to the applicant CBD Settlers Cove and his wife Kate, are friends of mine through our children. We have socialised together occasionally in the past. Although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have a perception of bias because I believe I do not have a close personal relationship with Mr. and Mrs. Gillard and Council's consideration of this application is not to approve or reject it. It is only for noting of a decision that has already been made by staff. Therefore, I will choose to remain in the meeting room. However, I will respond, respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Thank you, Councillor Wilkie. Thank you, Mayor Stewart. We have someone like to move a motion regarding this declarable conflict of interest. I'll move the standard one, which is it in front of us um, in... Oh, I'll better read it out. That the council note the declarable conflict of interest by Councillor Stewart and determine that it is in the public interest that Councillor Stewart participates and votes on this matter because council believes that she does not have a close personal relationship with Mr Gillard and therefore a reasonable person would trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. So seconded. Seconded, Councillor Jurisidic. Any further discussion? All in favour? It's carried. Uh, Mayor Stewart did not, did not vote on the above motion, but Councillor Stewart now resumes the chair. Yeah, thank you. Thank Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Stockwell. Thank yes. you. Yeah. I, Councillor Stockwell, the Mayor of a pro uh, prescribed conflict of interest in this matter. Oh, wait a minute. You can't have moved it if you've got I can't. A... I forgot about this one, so you have to redo the last one. Yeah, he can't move it if he's got a declarable conflict of interest that follows. Oh, okay. So, Councillor Wilkins. Okay. okay. Well, we will go back. I'll. So I'll move the uh, the original resolution. We'll have another second, I'll please. Second, that. second of Councillor Finzel. In the same vein. Same vein. We'll take the vote. At this time, excluding Councillor Stockwell. All in favour? Councillor Lawrence, can you indicate your yay or nay? In favour. Thank you. Thank you. That's Councillors Wegener, Finzel, Jurisovic, and Wilkie. Councillor Stockwell and Councillor Stewart did not vote on the above motion. Right, Councillor Stockwell. Councillor Stockwell. 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 back in the chair. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Stockwell. I declare that I have a prescribed conflict of interest, uh, interest in this matter as follows. Suncoast building approvals are identified as the applicant in number 17 development application, EXE 220015. Is that the correct reference or is that the old one? Okay. I contracted Suncoast building approvals to undertake, contracted Suncoast building approvals to undertake building certification of my proposed residence in Boring Point on the 29th of November 2021. This process is currently underway. The total fees associated with the completion of the certification and inspection regime is $5,904, which includes Noosa Council plumbing and drainage fees. As a result of my conflicts, I will now leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. And this is a need to be changed and happy to change um, the the wrong one. We'll put the matter of um, planning applications decided by delegated authority report September 2022 for a vote. All in favour? So I'll move it. Thank you, Councillor Council Finzel. All in favour? Unanimous. Councillor Lawrence. Thank, thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Finzel. 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 Yes. Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. 
Can we get Council Stockwell back in the room, please, Mr. CEO? Yeah. Five summary. Oh, sorry, I'll wait for you. Sorry, Council Stockwell. Summary of current and historical distributions of seagrass in the Noosa Estuary. Item six was referred to the General Committee. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please, for the planning and organisation? Thank you, Councillor Wigner. Seconded, thank you, Councillor Finzel. All in favour? Carried unanimously. Next are the services and organised. Oh, and Councillor Lawrenston. Sorry, Councillor Lawrenston. In favour, thank, thank you. Thank you. Next are the services and organisation committee recommendations on page 10. Contract number RP00073. Register of pre-qualified suppliers for parks and landscaping services. Item two, Noosa Holiday Park fees and charges. Item three, Noosa Aquatic Centre NAC full year report to June 30 June 2022. Item four, capital program delivery status 30 September 2022. So moved, Madam Chair. Councillor Drewsbridge, second to Councillor Finzel. All in favour? Carried unanimously. Councillor Lawrenston, thank you. Now to the general committee recommendations, which page, start on page 12. MCU 22 slash 0048 and OPW 2022 slash 0089. Development permit for material change of use for commercial landing and operational works for prescribed tidal works. Situated at 222 Gympie Terrace, Nooseville. Two, integrated water quality monitoring program. Council Stockwell. Oh. Hi, Council Stockwell. I wish to declare that I have a prescribed conflict of interest in this matter as follows. SEQ Water was a major client of my sole trader business, trading as Watershed Australia. Between 2016 and 2020, I took cash of planning, land capability and suitability assessments for source protection, recreation, grazing, infrastructure, environmental offsets and solar farms, environmental natural resource evaluation and expert witness services in the court case for the entity. This involved contracts to the value of $232,266. This work has covered the vast majority of SEQ water estate throughout South East Queensland, including SEQ Water Lake McDonald Estate, where the water treatment plant is located. As a result of my conflict of interest, I will now leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. Thank you. Um, I'll move the, um, the recommendation. I'll second it. Um, Councillor Wilkie. Oh, okay. Councillor Wilkie, second. Uh, all in favour? Carried. You know, uh, Councillor Lawrenston? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Stockwell. Uh, item three, draft Eastern Beaches foreshore management plan for public consultation. I have a conflict. I, Councillor Finzel, inform the meeting that I have a declarable conflict of interest in this matter. As on 5th of March 2020, Mr Peter Butt, who is an executive member of the Eastern Beaches Protection Association, donated $1,666.66 to my 2020 election campaign where I was one of three candidates that ran as a group known as Future Noosa, which is no longer an entity. As a result of my conflict of interest, I will now leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. Thanks, Councillor Finzel. Councillor Lawrenston. I, Councillor Lawrenston, inform the meeting that I have a prescribed conflict of interest in this matter as my brother, Gabriel Cherisani, owns a property at Beach with Safe, Sunrise Beach, and is also a member of the Executive Committee of the Eastern Beaches Protection Association. During my election campaign, my brother helped me with my campaign, handed out voting cards, and two of my election signs were outside his property on David Lowe Way. As a result of my conflict of interest, I will now leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. I will turn the camera off and, and, um, and mute. Thank you, Councillor Lawrenston. Council. I need to sorry. see the yeah, wording. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, Frank Wilkie, inform the meeting that I have a declarable conflict of interest in this matter as Susan Francis donated $750 to my 2020 electoral campaign. Susan Francis is the partner of Barry Cottrell. Barry Cottrell is the president of the Pridgen Beach Community Association. And the Pridgen Beach Community Association will be one of the stakeholders consulted as part of the Eastern Beaches foreshore management plan. I believe I can make an impartial decision on this matter. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Thank you. Any questions for Councillor Wilkie? Would someone like to move a resolution? Do you off again? I'll move that. Uh, that 
Councillor Wilkie stays in the room and that it is in the public interest that Councillor Wilkie participates in votes in this matter because council believes that. Why? Be because his input is incredibly valuable of when it comes to this uh, issue issues concerning uh, the beach. Yeah. And there his input is extremely valuable in relation to these matters. Yeah. And therefore, a reasonable person would trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. Is that enough? Yeah. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, for the matter to advise. Uh, can I speak yes. to it? Uh, sure. Do you, uh, Tom, did you want to speak to it? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I do. So I support this uh, on the fact that this is an issue. And, and I realise that other councillors are clear. The reason I wanted to uh, to outline my uh, support of this uh, of Council Wilkie staying in the room is the Pritchett Beach Community Association is a stakeholder in a foreshore management plan. They are representative of a community uh, in the Pritchett area with regard to the Pritchett area, the foreshore management plan, and and, and the Greater Foreshore Management Plan. There is no material gain to be had by the uh, Bridge and Beach Community Association in this matter, nor by Councillor Wilkie in any of this. So as a result of that, I think it's uh, prudent that uh, Councillor Wilkie is allowed to stay in the room. Councillor Stockwell, Councillor Wilkie. Yeah, um, I've received, just before the meeting, the same advice that there's been legal advice to say there is a declarable conflict. I haven't had a chance to look at that or challenge it, so I will, as a matter of caution, declare. Um, and uh, if you can just bring it up a little bit, please, Cathy. Um, I wish to inform the meeting that I have a declarable Are conflict. On, um, yeah, yeah. Oh. First. Yeah. Sorry. Good point. Francis. Yes. Yeah. Would you oh. like to talk to her? No, I can't because I've got a conflict. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I beg your pardon. Can't participate. Just, there's this conflict of interest. Once again, as I've said all along, we do not want it to interfere with or um, compromise our ability to make very, very good decisions. And in this case, Frank has lived in Parisian Beach. He completely knows the foreshore. He's at, he, he knows this subject matter very well. His, his input is incredibly important. Um, uh, this is an example where the, the conflict of interest may, it just goes a bit too far, I guess you can say. And uh, that we do not want the conflict of interest to unnecessarily compromise our ability to make really good decisions in council. Um, based on the findings still, made um, by the, uh, the Council of Conduct yeah. Tribunal and the fact that there has been a declarable in the amount of Susan Francis's um, interest and donation, um, and I appreciate Councillor Wilkie's explanation, and it would have been very difficult, and it's been a, hasn't been easy for everyone around the table. Um, I um, would think it prudent that. Um, Councillor Wilkie, leave the room in this instance, so I'll be voting against that. Point of order. Uh, question for the CEO, if I may, Madam Chair. Given that there are only three councillors um, available to vote on this matter, do we have a quorum in relation to the matter, Mr CEO? No. Did, did you want to answer that? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, um, through the Mayor, Councillor Jurisovic, um, with the three that we have at the table, given that we already have two councillors out of the room, um, we, we do still have enough to be able, we don't have quorum of meeting as such. Um, four is quorum for, for our council. That's the reason I'm asking um, the question. But um, what we do have is that um, we do have the ability to be able to make that decision of three. Um, and um, I, we could suspend standing orders and take some further advice. I'd be, I'd be happy to, to check that. Um, but uh, my view no is that, that, uh, that that's, yeah, why, that's, that's why I'm checking whether so there was a need for three, quorum or not. We had three before. Yeah, but um, sure. look, I, I can take further advice in the future on that. But um, for the purposes of this particular matter right now, my view would be is that the the three is um, sufficient. But uh, while we're talking, um, we will just check. Thank you, Mr. See how I'm just undertaking my due to, diligence of being prudent in asking yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do we, are we right? Please continue, Madam Mayor. Okay, we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of Councillor Wilkie staying in the room? Um, against? 
Motion Chairman. carried. Um, Councillor Wilkie stays in the room. Councillor Stockwell. Uh, yes. Um, I won't repeat what I said before. Um, so I will just declare a have a declarable conflict of interest in this matter as Susan Francis donated five hundred dollars to my twenty twenty election campaign. Ms Francis is a partner Ms Francis's partner, Mr Barry Cotterell of the president is the president of the Bridge and Beach Community Association, PVCA. PVCA has an interest in the Eastern Beaches foreshore manager plan. The interest of the PPCA is in one of exercising their role and representing the interests of their members, make them less, from the broader Phrygian community. Um, neither Ms Francis nor her partner have any direct personal financial interest, nor does PPCA stand to gain anything from the Eastern Beaches Foreshore Management Plan other than the broad community benefit of having a well-managed foreshore. This interest could be classified as part of ordinary business under the legislation. I believe the general member of the public will see it is in the public interest for me to stay in the room and request consideration. I believe I can make an impartial decision on this matter. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Councillor Wilkie. I'll move to Councillor Stockwell uh, remain in the room. No, no, no. Councillor Wilkie, you can't. Okay. Sorry. Why? You can. Because you have, you have a conflict. You, you, you can't act on this matter. It's only... No, but I've been told yeah. I can stay in the room. No, you can't. You can't have any, any of this. You can't be involved. Yep. Yeah, that's the same three. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if Brian went, if Brian went that's first that's and you hadn't declared, you wouldn't yeah, be able to. Yeah, it's, it's just to the three. Would you like Sorry. to move, Joe, or Tom? Yes, I'll move. I'll move that it is in the public interest that Councillor Stockwell participates and votes in this matter because Council believes that neither Miss Francis nor her partner have any direct personal financial interest, nor does the PBCA stand to gain anything from the Eastern Beaches foreshore management plan and therefore a reasonable person would trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. Seconder. Councillor Wigner, would you like to speak to this? Um, oh, sorry, Joe, I'm being yeah. happy. sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so, well, uh, for the same reasons, uh, and I alluded to these with uh, Councillor Wilkie, and uh, it, it's, it's more clearly uh, articulated here in the resolution that uh, I don't believe that uh, Ms Francis nor her partner have any direct personal financial interest, nor does the BBCA stand to gain anything from the Eastern Beaches foreshore management plan uh, specifically. So uh, as, uh, as stated in the uh, resolution, it's therefore a reasonable person would trust the final decision is made in the public interest as opposed to an individual's interest or financial gain. No, Joe. Joe, you send it out. Do that. Um, well, I feel that with the information that was provided with Councillor Wilkie, it changed my, changed my decision. Um, because of the relationships that had been talked about. Um, I don't think those relationships exist um, with Councillor Stockwell. Um, so I will support Councillor Stockwell staying in the room. Nothing, nothing to close. Put the matter to a vote. All in favour? Okay. Right, Councillor Pinzel? Um, now we need to no, deal, deal with the matter. Oh, okay. I'm going to move a motion which is slightly different to the motion passed at the General Committee. Uh, it adds one more clause, but I'll, I'll, it, the General Committee uh, motion has been uh, circulated, so I'll just read the additional clause. And that is um, that the CEO be requested to bring forward the encroachment policy for all areas of the Shire to the January round of meetings. <coughs> as past the General Committee. I'll ask a question of the CEO, if I may. The CEO, in, uh, with regard to that, uh, is that an achievable outcome for staff given uh, Christmas is uh, upon us uh, and uh, the, not knowing the progress of the uh, encroachment policy at this point in time? Mm -hmm. Through the Mayor, Councillor Jurisovic, thank you very much for your question. Uh, we, we are happy to be able to work towards a, a January delivery for, for the round of meetings. I understand our policy 
has largely been finalised through the environment team. Uh, we worked very closely with Councillor Stockwell this week um, and rather than bring to December, which I do have concerns of us being able to achieve that, um, we will work um, for the January round of meetings and um, we believe that is a outcome that will give council officers clear direction, particularly when dealing with the encroachment matters, and we bring that before council's consideration in the January round of meetings. Okay. Thank you, Seconder. Who's who, uh, uh, Seconder? Sorry, uh, you're yeah, happy to talk. Um, uh, I'll speak first. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it, I think it's in the public interest to bring forward that policy at the earliest possible convenience, as the CEO stated, I've talked to staff to, to get to with what they think would be uh, the soonest, and January is the soonest. Um, I'm happy with that. I think uh, one of the issues for staff is that, that they want to be sure that the council as a whole will support them in that, that action, and we need to make sure that as councillors that we have given clear direction on uh, what our approach is to compliance in regard to encroachments into public land all across the shire. Thanks, Councillor Stockwell. Anyone else like to talk to it, Tom? Question for the, I guess, the CEO. Mm. What, I mean, the encroachment policy is such a giant thing. We're going from Eastern Beaches to the river, the docks, to Hastings Street, encroaching onto the, the beach, public property, to the hinterland. Mm. Um, it, it, it's a big plan. Is, it, is this all encompassing within the encroachment policy? Mm. Mm. Through, through the chair, um, Councillor Wegener, um, this is specific to the Eastern Beaches. Um, the decision that you have before you and the management plan is specific to that. Oh. Um, the encroachment policy and, and what, um, through this resolution, I'll be directing staff is to ensure that our beaches encroachment policy, which is of the highest order um, in relation to um, issues we're facing at the moment and uh, community concern around encroachments, um, particularly into the uh, beach reserve and bushland reserve areas, is dealt with. There is, though, and you, you're absolutely correct, Councillor Wegner, there are multitudes of issues um, where we are having encroachments into public land. What I'd like this to be dealt with is higher order to start with. If the team have the ability to be able to deliver that broader um, scope, um, we'll work towards that. Um, I have been advised that um, there has been quite an amount of work that's been done on this policy already. Um, so I hope it is going to give that ability to, to bring the council all encompassing. Um, but if not, I will stick to what the council has um, got before them currently for consideration and decision, which is that around the eastern beaches. This is specific to that matter. It also addresses the, um, the recent deputation um, that came to our council petition that was tabled by concerned members of the community about encroachments. Um, it will give us, as council officers, clear direction on the council table as to how we manage and work through. And we're doing that at the moment um, through the head of powers we have available. This provides more. Thank you. Um, Kim, Quick. So, sorry, Joe, we've got our director of, um, on the line. Yes, Kim. Yes, uh, through the chair, just further to our CEO's response. It is absolutely our intention for the encroachments policy to cover encroachments into all public land. So um, uh, our CEO is correct that we are you know, prioritising through the process the eastern beaches, but the policy will actually be cover encroachments into all public land across the Shire, so we'll be able to be applied consistently. Councillor Thank you for clarifying, Kim, because I was about to ask the CEO the question. Doesn't point one actually refer to develop and resource a council managed land encroachment policy which would incorporate all public land encroachments, that. not just the eastern beaches? Yeah. <laughs> Councillor, uh, Kim, you've still got your hand up. Have you? Kim? Uh, sorry, that was from before. Right, thank you, Kim. Um, but yet, just to confirm, that that's correct, thank um, you. Councillor Jerusi. That's the intention. Thank you. That was my intention in agreeing to the other way. <laughs> could, could we entitle this uh, this report, Don't Do It? Is that you speaking to the motion, <laughs> Councillor? Okay, yeah. Councillor Stockwell, <laughs> anyone else um, would like to speak to this? No, Councillor, I think it's also the other day. Um, I'm saying you will close. Yeah, I will close. Just, I, the CEO was obviously, this is an issue that's been evolving, and I had tried to push and, uh, the, the, the momentum on the enforcement. Obviously, as a, a politician, we are very aware of the community sentiment around this. I do think it's good that, the, as uh, the, the director has pointed out, that while 
The impetus has come from the Eastern Beaches foreshore management plan. Uh, it's clear that the issue should be dealt with the same way, uh, whether it's a, a, a cheap back block um, going against a bushland reserve or a, a multi-million dollar property going onto the beach. It's the same policy and approach that we want to start to enforce. Put the vote to all in favour. Unanimous. Um, Councillor Finzel, could you get Councillor Finzel? Thank you. And Councillor Lawrenston. I'll do that. Yep. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Lawrenston's out for this one. She's Councillor Lawrenston's out for the next one. We'll still need to. Um, she still has to go through the declaration. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, hello, Councillor Lawrenston. Okay. We'll just wait for um, Councillor Finzel, Councillor Lawrenston. First time councillors participated with the roof open. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Lawrence. It's a sunny day. <laughs> uh, uh, I, Councillor Lawrence, inform the meeting that I have a conflict of interest in this matter. My husband and I own a property at 2 stroke 17 Lisa the Brave Nisa Hicks. Since November 2020, this property has been used for sort of thermal accommodation rental. As a result of my conflict, Thank you, Councillor Lawrenston. Uh, can I have a mover, please, for the recommendation? Happy Thank you, Councillor Finzel. Second to Councillor Stockwell. All in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you, Councillor Lawrenston. Back in. Thank you, Mr. Sear. Back. All right, she's back. back. Okay. And item number five: News to Shire Council 2021-2022 Annual Report. Item 6, Financial Performance Report, October 2022. Item 7, Council Meeting Schedule 2023. Item 8, Operational Plan and Progress Report, First Quarter 2022-2023. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Second, Councillor Finzel, all in favour? Unanimous, Councillor Lawrenston. Thank you. Uh, we are now up to page 19 of the agenda. There are no reports direct to the ordinary. There are no confidential items. We have one submission to public question time. Mr. Brian O'Connor. Welcome, Mr. O'Connor. Hello. Um, Mr O'Connor, just to let you know, after you read question one, welcome to the lectern. Our Director okay. of Environment Sustainable, Sustainable Development, Kim Rawlings, will uh, respond. I'll, I'll respond, Madam Mayor, because oh, Kim's Okay, online. beg your pardon. Okay. And well, Scott, our CEO, um, will respond to both of your questions, Mr O'Connor. Welcome to our meeting and to the lectern. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's fine. My question is this. The Noosa Council Cultural Plan 2019-23 states that Noosa Council will review and improve its approach to placemaking, while the Noosa Council Operational Plan for 2021-22 says the Council will continue the rollout of the placemaking project, thus indicating that work is well underway. Given these self-imposed objectives and timelines, with completion scheduled for next year, can the Council confirm that the placemaking project has begun and is on target to meet the deadline? And can the Council outline what progress has been made and when will the results of the deliberations be made public? Mr O'Connor, thank you very much for your question um, to the Ordinary Meeting of Council and, and the Mayor as Chair. The Noosa Cultural Plan 2012 to 2023 is included under the theme Places and Spaces, the following focus area, sense of place. Council will review and improve its approach to placemaking to ensure its concepts and strategies are understood and implemented collectively across the organisation. It will work with stakeholders to achieve an integrated place-based approach which supports community cohesion, improves the aesthetic appeal and maintains a sense of local identity through measures including creative arts, built infrastructure, streetscaping, and precinct development. Work is underway on the PLACE project in line with the objectives of the cultural plan. The PLACE project initiation included the setting up of an internal governance framework in terms of reference, establishing a monitoring and evaluation program to ensure the ongoing progress could be measured and evaluated over time. And finally, the selection of the potential pilot location to undertake a PLACE-based program. The internal governance framework has been established and regular meetings have been occurring with relevant council officers since November 2020 in order to establish an accurate baseline for measurement and evaluation across the Shire 
Council undertook a livability survey in November 2021 in conjunction with Place School, with the results provided on Council's webpage in March this year. Since the survey, Council staff have been collating this information along with other necessary resources to determine a suitable evaluation process for the selection of a pilot location. This work is now near completion and will be workshopped with Council with the hope of announcing the proposed pilot location early in the new year. We acknowledge that this has not occurred as quickly as envisaged. However, it was important to get the process correct, taking into account all of the information to ensure the best outcome. Uh, Madam Chair, may I just uh, allude to the fact that I think there's an error in the date of the cultural plan in the response from the CEO there. The council wasn't even formed in 2012, Mr CEO. I think that should read 2019 as per the question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brusevich. Councillor, Mr O'Connor. And, and I realise that I have made a mistake in the, in the question that I submitted to the Let's council in respect of um, a particular date. Uh, and uh, that should be corrected in the uh, minutes as well. Thanks, Mr. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. So, on 22 March 2022, you. the Mayor Councillor Stewart announced that Noosa Council had received 3.58 million under the 1.8 billion city deal involving three levels of government, and that Noosa's initial share would kickstart livability projects across the Shire. The deal contains a further $400 million available to 11 councils under a contestable bid process. Have any livability projects kicked off? And if so, what are they? And can the council give an assurance that serious planning is underway to position our council favourably to win a further significant chunk of the city deal money still to be committed? What might those additional projects be? Thanks, Mr. To the Mayor, Mr O'Connor, and uh, in response, the SEQ City Deal is a 10-year funding agreement between all three levels of government and administered through the SEQ Council of Mayors and Implementation Board. Due to the recent federal election installing a new federal government, coupled with significant machinery of government changes, there is no progress to date on City Deal funding for Noosa Shire Council, with the exception of the Resilient Rivers Initiative. The new federal government has now reaffirmed its commitment to the SEQ City Deal and as such further discussions will occur with the SEQ Council of Mayors Implementation Board in relation to the funding of council-led projects. It can be advised that Noosa Shire Council's placemaking project is in its final stages of selection and as a pilot. One town centre will be selected for placemaking activities. The analysis by council officers will be presented to council in the next fortnight. If there is agreement with council officers' analysis, a report will be provided to council for further consideration and decision. This will occur over the coming months and will not require city deal funding. In relation to the SEQ city deal, the CEO of council is working closely with Comsec, Council of Mayors, uh, South East Queensland, and has city deal experience as a member of the Darwin City Deal Implementation Board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I believe that the federal government has committed to that funding. They have now, yes. Yeah, and the federal government, Mr O'Connor, have committed to that funding for the city deal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the next meeting, the next ordinary meeting will be held on the 15th of December 2022 at the Council Chambers, 9 Pelican Street, Taunton, commencing 5pm.